Where was Mao? Ah, well, he didn't come down to see me for a while. He was saving that for a grand entrance, but eventually I was taken up into a cave. It was as primitive as everybody else's. It was whitewashed walls, floor. You had brick, uh, bricks that they sat on for a table. And there was Madame uh, Mao II at this point. His first wife had been killed by, uh, by Chiang Kai-shek in 1927. And they lived in very primitive quarters. In fact, the only mark of elegance was uh, a mosquito netting over the bed. Uh, it was as simple as could be. There were candles and books, and I think the records of the adventures of the Red Army were in two traveling cases under his bed. And that was about it. And what was he like? He, what did he look like? Oh, well, he was thin. We think of him as in the later pictures when he had gained a great deal of weight. Well, no, nobody had much food on this enormous trek that took a year. He was taller than many of the others. Um, his uh, hair was longer, uh, which we don't think of either at that time. He didn't give a damn about his looks. He wore very simple cotton clothes. He could have been dressed up like some sort of operetta um, general, and he was as unpretentious as could be. So unpretentious. Sometimes he took off his pants in your presence. Uh, you Is that heard, right? You read that story. <laughs> well, the first time, he was, we were talking. I was taking down some history. And he rolled down the edge, and he began to, to, to look for lice. Now, you have to understand <laughs> that we're out there in, in the country, and sanitation levels, although they were doing their best to control them, uh, there were bed bugs and lice and mosquitoes. In fact, I wrote to my father and said, I could send you back an etymological uh, diary of what, what's been going on out here. Uh, and he was quite unpretentious about it. And it was very hot. It was the summer. And so, I'm you're exactly right, sitting in the cave. He just took off his trousers and was continued to look at a map that uh, Ling Piao was talking about some of uh, their adventures. And he was correcting dates and positions and so forth, completely unconcerned uh, about it. Nobody else paid any attention, so therefore neither did I. And uh, I kept thinking to myself, you know, imagine Mussolini suddenly dropping his pants in front of him. <laughs> oh, my God. So.